Traveling to Rio de Janeiro can be a life-changing experience, and I highly recommend any man under the age of 30 to give it a go. However, it can also be a terrifying experience. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how you can get the most out of this city, but first, I'm gonna tell you what not to do. Do not walk down empty, dark, dimly lit streets at night, especially when you're drunk. Some areas are obviously riskier than others, but virtually anywhere in Rio, this is a massive risk and I do not recommend it. The areas you really want to avoid at night when you're drunk is Lapa, Centro and Santa Teresa. Ironically, in many ways, you're safer doing this in the favelas because people don't tend to get robbed so much there since the rule of law is a lot harsher in those environments where it's not run by the police than it is out in the streets in Copacabana or Ipanem. If you stick to well-lit, busy streets in the nicer areas of Zona Sul, you should be safe. But always use your senses, use your intuition, and notice if there's not many people around, if it's dark, and if you sense that something is a little off, always avoid those dark streets. Do not accept drinks from people you do not know or leave your drink unattended anywhere. There are many cases of tourists coming here and leaving their drink alone or accepting a drink from a stranger and there is something in it called Boa Noite Cinderella. You don't wanna put yourself in a position where your memory is essentially wiped and you become a prime target for robbery. This does sometimes happen, so avoid leaving your drink out uncovered in open space and definitely don't accept drinks from strangers. The third thing not to do in Rio de Janeiro is let someone else book your taxi for you. Let's say you've gone out and you've met a nice girl, things are about to get exciting and she tries to book a taxi or book an Uber. Do not accept it. I've heard a few cases from friends and people I know here where they've got in that taxi, it wasn't a taxi and they left without their wallet, their passport in the middle of nowhere. So be really careful about getting transport and make sure that you either hail a yellow taxi or book your own Uber. Do not approach beautiful women in the favelas. It might be tempting to go there and you see someone you like the look of and you want to say hi, but there is a big risk involved. Make sure if you do go to these areas, go with a friend who lives here or a tour guide, someone that really knows the area. They could be affiliated with the wrong types of people. Generally in Rio, it's okay. If you approach a girl and her boyfriend sees, people are very relaxed and it's not usually going to cause a problem, but inside the favelas, it's very different rule set. And if you talk to a girl who's affiliated with the wrong people, that could end in a very nasty way for you. I had one experience where I approached a girl and I was with a tour guide, but he couldn't catch me in time. So I talked to her. I found out that she was affiliated with one of the gangs and one of the top guys in the gang. So suffice it to say, she didn't get the WhatsApp message. Number five, do not wade deep into the sea when there aren't other people around and especially when the red flags are showing. The sea in Rio is a majestic beast. Beautiful, cool, accompanied by a nice subtle breeze, but it's also a very dangerous creature. If you go out too far, there are rip tides and currents that can pull you out. And even experienced swimmers and some surfers have been sucked in, been lost at sea, never to be found again. Last year, I saw someone go out too far. He was struggling. If he were by himself, he would have drowned. What everyone on the beach did was they formed a chain with their hands and actually dragged him out from the deep area and pulled him back in. So if there's no one around, be very careful of the sea. It only takes a couple of meters between completely safe and fine to absolutely no chance of survival. So watch out. Do not go into the forests or the deep nature without mosquito repellent. Rio is built in a forest. It's the largest urban forest in South America. But if you go too deep, the animals start getting a little bit strange the mosquitoes get bigger and they're not the ones that you can expect if you're from the States or from Europe. These guys are going to give you an ankle that's swollen up to the size of an apple. I had this experience. I couldn't walk for two weeks. I got a terrible fever as well. So make sure if you enter these areas, you're careful not only about your footwear because it can get slippery, especially if it's been raining, but make sure you have repellent on because these mosquitoes do not fuck around. You can buy some regular brands like Off or even better Off for kids, which really does the job. It's a cream, the mosquitoes won't come to you and you'll survive able to walk. Do not sit on the beach for extended periods of time without sun cream. The amount of guys that have come here to visit me, they go to the beach on the first day and their whole week is ruined because they come back peeling and red. The sunshine is often accompanied by a wind, which makes it feel cooler, but don't be fooled. There is a lot of sun exposure in Rio and even when it's hot, 30, 35 degrees, the actual 
exposure to the sun is extremely high, so the burns you're going to get are going to be greater even still than the heat that they suggest, if that makes sense. Wear Factor 50. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy. It's much better than coming back peeling like a snake. Number eight, don't feed the monkeys. Now, everyone local here knows not to feed the monkeys for a number of reasons. When you feed them, they end up coming into the urban environment, making a mess, taking food, but actually they start to get acclimatized to humans, they carry diseases, and in some cases they've been known to attack when in groups. So if you've got food on you, be careful of the monkeys, really don't feed them because they essentially have learned helplessness. If you feed them, they learn that when they come to people, they get given food, and that means that they stop foraging and you could actually cause a lot of damage to that ecosystem. So don't feed the monkeys, it will make you very unpopular. Don't stand under the jackfruit. This is gonna sound ridiculous, but when you go into the forest, you're gonna see these massive fruit looming large above your head. These fruits, a lot of people eat them. They're called jackfruit. They originally came from India. Now they loom at sometimes 30 kilograms above your head, enormous fruits, and they fall all the time. So this sounds like overkill, but it's not. Be careful when you're walking through the forest. Don't stand for too long under a tree full of jackfruit, because if one of those bad boys knocks you on the head, it's game over. And number 10, don't slam the car doors. Now I know that in the US, in the UK, in Europe, we can slam the car doors. They've got massive springs that create resistance between the door and the car. Over here, you should treat them more like glass house windows. My Uber rating in the first three months of living in Rio dropped from 4.8 to 3.6. And I couldn't understand why I was being sworn at and shouted at in a foreign language. Turns out that they really hate having the door slammed. So shut the door the same way that you would shut a window in your house and you won't end up like me, not being able to book an Uber. There is a phrase in Rio, Brazil não é para principiantes. Brazil is not for beginners. And it sounds obvious, it sounds simple. Okay, it can be dangerous. There are a million things that can go wrong. The air conditioning suddenly stops working in the night and you're left in 40 degree heat. The neighbor tries and knocks down a wall at five in the morning and you get no sleep that way. There's a flash flood in the street after some rain and everything is completely inundated by water. The mayor might suddenly get arrested on criminal fraud and there's a massive hole left where the law once was. There's a million things that can go wrong here, but if you stay within the parameters, you stay perspicacious, you will avoid the major pitfalls that I see most gringos and tourists falling into in Rio de Janeiro. I'm often asked whether Rio is safe and the simple answer is no, it's not safe but it's not inherently dangerous either. It very much depends on how you choose to live here and how much attention you pay to your surroundings. Just like if you're on top of a high building, is it safe or dangerous? Well, if you're looking over the edge and leaning out over it, it's dangerous. If you stay in the middle, it's safe. So it's much more about how you interact with the city than the objective truth of whether it's safe or dangerous. Now that you know what not to do in Rio, I'm gonna tell you 10 things that you definitely should do in Rio. One, go and talk to the lovely women in the daytime. It's a beach town and so the culture is very laid back and cool. They're very proud of their city and you will hear the word beleza thrown around a lot. What it means is beauty, relax, chill out, enjoy. So confidence goes a long way but arrogance does not. I see a lot of people from Europe thinking, oh you know I'm a foreigner so I have massive value over here and what happens is they act arrogant. They act like they're superior but what they don't realize is though that can be interesting to locals. They're actually very proud of where they're from. So the arrogance really doesn't flow. It's going to make the women unattracted to you. It's going to make the men less interested in you and less amicable to you. And that's going to cause a lot of problems when you want to date and talk to women. So I recommend always the one for in, one for out theory. Keeping your cultural nuances. You're from France, you're from the UK, Germany, the States. Bring that flavor to Brazil. Don't modify yourself or try and change your personality. Emphasize what is different about you whilst also adapting to the culture. Learn a bit of the language. Learn some of the nuances of how they interact, how they speak, how they move, how they talk. Don't show up to the beach in skinny jeans and a buttoned up shirt because people will think you're gay or from Sao Paulo. Try and adapt yourself to the culture whilst maintaining the 
essence of where you're from and you'll tend to be interesting and relatable which are both really important when it comes to building your social circle making friends and also dating attractive women now i get asked a lot about learning portuguese how important is that i would say in zona sul that's leblon ipanema copacabana roughly 50 percent will speak english conversationally and about 20 percent will speak it very well so learning portuguese should be top of your to-do list in terms of preparations to come here really if you have one thing that you want to focus on it should be learning as much portuguese as you can and if you want to learn it there are a number of ways that you can do that the first will be to have a friend over here if you know anyone over here set up one one hour zoom call a week pay them or do an exchange of service just so that you can get on the phone and practice speaking because the accent's the most difficult part foreigners who speak decent portuguese really stand out and have a big advantage though you can also manage without your options and ability to fit in with the culture will be severely restricted i've also had this video translated into portuguese thanks to vidbeat after a lot of searching i found a video software that can translate videos into 70 plus different languages so to help you guys start learning portuguese before you come to rio you can check out that video in portuguese and start learning a link to that video is below in the description and a link to vidbe is there as well if you want to translate your own videos one other way that you can do it is through tinder gold now i never recommend dating apps except in this case if you can find someone who lives in the city on the dating app have a conversation with them set up some video call you can sort of kill two birds with one stone you can get to know someone on the ground over here before you come someone that you can meet up with get some social entree to the culture but also you can practice your portuguese and they might want to learn english too so you can do a sort of language exchange by utilizing the apps for a different reason just make sure you delete them when you get here because you don't want to be swiping away on apps when you could be out in the beautiful city talking to people in real life so if you want to meet women in the daytime the first place i would recommend is along the beach of ipanema to leblon now that should be starting at posto 10 to posto 12. the beach is separated by posts what they call postos and when people are meeting up if you're going to meet a friend they will say meet me at posto 10 meet me at posto 9. 10 to 12 is generally where i find the most attractive women and also the most competition the guys are very well built they work out they train on the beach there's a big culture of physical beauty here so it goes a long way to also get in shape try some calisthenics exercises make sure that you lose the beer belly before you come here because that will go a long way posto 9 and 8 is the gay area so over there it's going to be uh, men in skimpy pants and they're not afraid to show their interest you don't have to be careful but be aware that if you go there you're going to get sometimes more than just a casual eye let's say the other places i'd recommend to meet amazing women would be rua dias ferreira that's rua dias ferreira and that road has a lot of the best bars on it as well it's got cafes bars restaurants and thursday through till saturday night it's going to be busy people flowing out from the bars into the street dressed up really fun place to have a casual drink or actually go and there's some dance bars there as well with electronic music there's a mix something for everyone my friends say that it's level difficult there because the people are the most attractive they're generally really well dressed and it's a little bit harder to meet really attractive women there because the competition is also greater just like a nightclub in europe or the states you go to a really good nightclub the competition is higher even though there are more opportunities the other places to go in the day would be hua ataufo da paiva i've pronounced it wrong always gets me but that's the main street of leblon so it's two blocks back from the beach that's two quadrants back and all along that street there's also bars restaurants clothes shops electronic shops and loads of people walking there throughout the day so you're always going to find opportunities there and ipanema close to the stations that's close to nossa senora de paix and general osorio close to the stations you're going to find little market shops starbucks cafes where there's generally going to be more of a congregation of people ipanema outside of those stations seems a little abandoned there are some bars sure but i don't really see many people walking through the streets it has a much more residential feel on the whole than other parts of rio in the center of rio you have praça mauá and uruguayana these can be a little riskier you've got to watch your back a little more in the center of rio especially since the pandemic it tends to be a little dodgier over there but right by the museums the museu da manhã museum of tomorrow and the museu da arte i'm probably pronouncing all of this terribly the museum of modern art the museum of art and the museum of tomorrow is a big open space and it generally tends to be safer to stick to where the buildings are the people are there's going to be more of a police presence you don't really want 
to walk or wander too far out of those areas because it can be risky at this time since there's fewer people working at the offices in the center since the pandemic so you get a little bit more suspicious activity on the streets finally you have Botafogo and there's Rua Voluntaris da Patria and Rua Bambina these two streets generally have a lot of opportunities as well there's some restaurants some bars some interesting things happening Botafogo is a really interesting place to go there's a lot of secrets there's a lot of old villas and chateau style houses in the old style with open parks and open museums inside so it's a great place to visit the opportunities are okay but generally speaking I would stick to those two streets by the way in the description you're going to find a cheat sheet where I list all of this information and much more so if you want to really learn where to go what to do what to avoid click on the link in the description download the cheat sheet and get all of the information there so let's go indoors where would you go if you want to find somewhere a little bit cooler and talk to some women inside the malls so the best malls in my opinion would be shopping Leblon that's the main shopping center in Leblon which is the more high-end area of Zona Sul the south zone in Baja de Tijuca across Vidigal and Hosinha you have shopping Baja and downtown Baja these are two enormous malls in the American style the type of thing you'll see in Miami and California basically the size of a small village all dedicated to these malls there's loads of opportunities inside here just be careful about the way you approach as I said here things are smooth cool simple you may be a guy that's used to you know sort of running up and saying hey I just saw you and I really wanted to say hi over here you can take it a little slower hey how are you doing you look great today try and slow everything down smoothen out your approach keep it as fluid as possible because the high octane rigid sort of slightly awkward approach doesn't really work here try and smoothen everything out especially if you're going to approach inside the malls because people are going to be watching people are going to be with family and for your sake and for everyone's sake try and keep it subtle in Botafogo you have shopping Hill Sul which I think is the biggest mall outside of Baja and this mall has everything all of the rest restaurants, the best gyms, everything like that. It's just a little bit farther away from normal life, from the town centers and everything relevant there, but it's also a great mall to meet people. For all the other options, check the cheat sheet because I don't want to list them all out here. They're all there. So for any other information, find the cheat sheet, download it and enjoy. So where should you go at night? You've arrived here. You want to meet some girls. You want to make some friends. The first place to start that I recommend all of my clients and friends that are coming here is with Mundo Lingo. Now Mundo Lingo is essentially a language exchange community where people from all over the world, including Brazil, will come. They'll put a flag on from where they're from and a flag for the country whose language they want to learn. So you would come if you're from the UK to have an English flag and a Portuguese flag. You're from England, you want to learn Portuguese. And here are some great opportunities to meet digital nomads. There's going to be some other guys that are working from their computer, drop shipping, e-commerce, whatever it is. And you're going to be able to network and meet these guys, but also you're going to be able to talk to some Brazilian Brazilian women and some other Latin American women, sometimes some Russian, Polish women, and all of them are going to be interested in the culture as well, and they're going to speak a variety of languages. This place probably isn't the best in terms of actual quality opportunities. I've generally tended to find it's a slightly nerdy atmosphere. It's a little bit set up, organized, fun. But if you want to warm up and just start talking to people, I know, I get it, it's a bit terrifying being in a new country and trying to make new friends, meet women. This is a great place to warm up because the women are very receptive they're very open they want to talk your language and so you're going to have some great opportunities to warm up at Mundo Lingo now there's going to be one of those in Ipanema and one in Botafogo in Ipanema you want to look at the Ipanema Beach Hostel last time I checked it was on Thursday evenings at the Ipanema Beach Hostel and on Tuesday evenings at the Jungle Garden Pub in Botafogo both of these are great options same types of demographics so I highly recommend in your first week or two getting down there on a Tuesday and Thursday evening and meeting some guys in your position and some women who will happily talk to you. Now in Leblon, I've already mentioned Hua Gias Ferreira. Now this has a load of different bars from the classic old school Botecos to the modern electronic music bars. But what you'll find consistently is beautiful, well-dressed people who are somewhat open to having a conversation. Look, you will get some blowouts. If you want to talk to girls, you're going to have to face some rejections, especially in these environments. So don't think that you just won the lottery and everyone's gonna fall at your knees when you say hello. It's not that easy. Rio is a global city, it's an international city. Many of the women have traveled abroad and they kind of know how the world works. So expect there to be some really great opportunities, but 
but also expect some blowouts and some rejections. I generally tend to find that the best conversations I have are gonna be with people who aren't actually from Rio. So let's say there's some girls and they've traveled over from Sao Paulo or Goiano or Paraná, a different city, a different state, and they've traveled over to Rio. Their exposure to tourists and foreigners is much lower. Their openness to meeting new people and having adventures and fun is gonna be much higher. So generally speaking, the best chance of successful connections and interactions are gonna be with women from outside of Rio. So the best bars there are Laraba, Garoa, Belmonte, Zuza, and Bruteco. Bruteco, you'll find a lot of other tourists and gringos. It's generally a place where everything is a bit overpriced because it's easy, safe, secure. You know how it goes. When you step off the beaten track, the prices go down. When you stay in the tourist hotspots, the prices go up, sometimes unnecessarily. On the main street at Taufo da Paiva, you've got Jobi, Microbar, Bracarense, and Bado Bacan. I am getting the names horribly wrong. These are all bars that are similar to the ones that you'll find on GS Ferreira. They're chilled out, easy going, nice drinks, nice ambience, and you'll find some great opportunities there as well. I generally don't recommend going to the bars in the favelas, but Vigigal and Rocinha tend to be safer most of the time because there are a lot of tourists actually living in those favelas. So they generally tend to be more peaceful, but at any time, violence can break out. There can be gunfights even. So I don't recommend going to those, but if you do want to check out a nice bar in Vigigal, there's one called Flor de Seu, which is Flower of Heaven. That's a really nice bar with beautiful views of the city, really high up in the favela, and you will also find good opportunities and great parties there. I'm not going to go through all the bars on here because there's a huge list in the cheat sheet, but in Ipanema, you've got Belmonte, Bruteco, Emporio 37, the Beach Hostel that I've already mentioned, Beach House Hostel, which does barbecues two nights a week, another Garoa, and a really nice hotel with a great restaurant bar. Copacabana and Botafogo are all listed on the cheat sheet, so find the rest of the information there. So the third thing to get right in Rio de Janeiro is your money, your banking, your financial situation. Because if you don't sort this out, it can be a disaster. Your international banking cards should work. If you're from the UK, Monzo, Starling, Revolut, TransferWise, all of these will work. But make sure you bring a little bit of money with you as well. One, two, three hundred reais max. You want to be careful. Some places don't accept card. The card machine's broken. And always remember that your card is a credit card here. It may be a debit card. Doesn't matter. If it's an international banking card, it's a credit card. When they say debit card, it generally refers to the local bank accounts here, Bradesco, Caixa, Santander in Brazil, but your card is always a credit card. I recommend getting a CPF number. It is a bit of bureaucracy. You will have to fill out some forms. There will be some waiting in an office. So if you're here for only a few days, ignore it. If you're here for two weeks plus, a month plus, definitely you'll want to get a CPF number. A lot of the mobile phone contracts will require that you do. There's a few that don't, but most of them will require that you have that number. If you want to do some transactions here, you might need it. It's basically a local identity number, how they can identify you as you in Rio. Again, a link to the site where you can find the CPF number is in the cheat sheet. Finally, on the money front, be careful about overstaying your visa. It may feel like things are very relaxed here, but I've been landed with a 10,000 real fine for overstaying. That's about $2,000. I overstayed. I didn't think it was a problem. No one told me anything about it. I come back and I get told you're getting a £10,000 fine that you have to pay right now or you're getting on the next flight home. And in my case, it was actually 10200 because I had another charge of 200 reais. And then when I went to the currency exchange to try and pay it, they said we only do transactions up to 10000 So I actually had no option. And if I didn't have a friend here with a local bank account that could send the money using their CPF number, I would have had to leave the country and book another £2,000 flight back home. So be careful careful about overstaying. The rules aren't that clear. You don't often get explained in English exactly how long you can stay and what it means if you overstay. So be really careful because the bureaucracy can bite you in the ass and you never know when it's going to pop up. Number four, stay in the right areas. Getting the environment in which you stay right is really important and it varies a lot from area to area, region to region. So I would generally recommend for most guys to stay in Leblon. Leblon is a little bit more expensive than the other areas and much more expensive than the average in Rio, but there is a reason. It's generally safer, cleaner, good restaurants, bars, more beautiful. It's a really, really good place to stay. And if you wanna stay there, you can be expecting to spend 
spend about £400 a week to get a decent one bedroom apartment. If you're staying a little longer, a month plus, it might drop down to about 1200 per month. That could be in pounds or dollars. But generally speaking, you're going to be budgeting a minimum of £1,000 per month in order to stay in Leblanc. The next place I'd recommend would be Ipanema, which is right next door to Leblanc. And that will be about 200 bucks less for a month. So you're looking to spend about £800 for a month or more and maybe 300 bucks per week if you're only staying for a few days. The third place I'd recommend staying would be Baja de Tijuca. The only issue with staying in Baja is that it's much more like Miami, Florida in the States where you need to drive everywhere. In Leblon and Ipanema, anything you need is a short walk away. Supermarkets right next door, pharmacy right next door, restaurants, friends, beach, it's all walkable. In Baja, it's a very different story. You basically shouldn't walk anywhere. Everywhere is accessible by road and you can get a cheap Uber, but I don't recommend walking the streets. There's a lot of ladrones, people who might come in and see an open window, see a loose mobile phone and try and take their chance. So you want to be careful about walking around, especially by the busy roads in Baja de Tijuca. In Leblon and Ipanema, it's a lot more tourist friendly and a lot easier to walk to wherever you need to go. Honorable mention would be Botafogo. Now, I don't know many tourists that come to Rio and stay there, but I think it's a hidden gem. There's loads of really interesting, cool karaoke, snooker bars, beautiful old buildings. Prices are a little bit cheaper than Ipanema, maybe knock another hundred pounds per month off the price of Ipanema. And you really get to know the city much better in Botafogo than you will in Zonasu, in Leblon and Ipanema. Reason being that it's more of a local atmosphere. It's typically more of a left-wing culture. There are a lot of university students living there. And if you don't like that whole scene, graffiti on the walls, a bit of pink hair here and there, then maybe it's not your place. But certainly to get to know some of the secrets of Rio, I highly recommend staying in Botafogo. If you're thinking about Copacabana, I would wipe it off your list. It is pretty dangerous for the most part. There is a lot of crime and robberies in the streets. It's generally dirtier than Botafogo. The beach is busier and less clean. I don't see many advantages to living there. And it's a mistake a lot of tourists and foreigners make when coming to Rio for the first time. There are beautiful, amazing parts of Rio. I wouldn't recommend Copacabana. I would say it's one of the more dangerous places I've been. However, there are still some amazing hotels. You have the Copacabana Palace Hotel. You have some really amazing things, but just be very wary when visiting Copacabana. Keep your phone in your pocket safely. I would keep your hand on your pocket as well because I know many people that have been robbed on the beach and in the streets in Copacabana. There are some other options which I've listed in the cheat sheet, but I'm not going to run through them all now. And remember, if you want to bring someone back to the apartment, if you've gone on a date or you've met a girl and you want to go back to your Airbnb or your hotel, you want to make sure in advance that that's possible. When booking the Airbnb, if you're booking it just for yourself, make sure that you're allowed to invite a friend over for lunch. The way that I addressed this when I first came to Rio was I took someone back and I was told that she wasn't allowed in. And this happened in a hotel and an Airbnb. They said you booked for you. Her name wasn't on the list. She's not invited to stay at the house. You've got to find somewhere else. So the best thing you can do when you're booking the Airbnb and you're not sure is to say, I have a friend in Rio. Is it okay if they come over for lunch one day? And if they say, yeah, that's fine, then it means you've basically got the go ahead and it means you'll be able to bring your guest back to the apartment or the hotel without any problems. Finally, wherever you stay, double check that the apartment has working air conditioning in the living area and in the bedroom. This is a terrible mistake that I made staying in Botafogo over the summertime in Rio. 35 degree heat, no air conditioning. I didn't sleep for a month. So make sure that the air conditioning not only works, but that it's separated and there's a working installment in the bedroom and in the living room. Because without air conditioning, especially during the summertime, is pretty much much unlivable. So the next important thing, if you're a digital nomad, an entrepreneur, or a guy that's working from your computer, is to make sure that you've got a good work setup. Now, a lot of people like to work from their apartments. For me, that just doesn't work. I like to work in co-working spaces, but whatever suits you, internet can be a problem. Even in some of the apartments, the internet cuts out a lot. It's not very strong in the first place. To make sure you check that the internet works in your apartment, what I'd highly recommend is finding a co-working space. The options are 
are basically WeWork is a good option. You got a WeWork in the center of Rio, you've got one in the national airport, Santos Dumont, and you've got one in Baja de Tijuca. The WeWork will cost you between about one and $200 per month just for the co-working space. If you want a fixed desk, it will cost a little bit more, but it's a very good option. There are some interesting people to network with there, free coffee, free beer. They do some events and parties, so it's a really good option. I visited one of the Regus's and it was not a good option. It was a tiny 50 by 50 co-working space, very corporate, no one talking, not particularly good reception. So Regus can be good in some countries. In Rio, I found that it's probably good if you're a corporation. It's very bad if you want the co-working space. The other option is to go to Selena. Selena is a hostel and hotel. So it's got multi-dorm rooms and it's got fixed living residences where you can have an ensuite bathroom. But every Selena has a co-working space. You can find these all across Latin America, Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador. And they're a really good place to co-work because you've got both residents living there, local Brazilians who are making a bit of money themselves, and you've got a lot of tourists. Generally speaking, I find it to be a more sociable co-working space and a less work-focused one. The guys there are more interested in the partying than the work. So if you are someone that likes to work hard and then play hard, finding a place that you can really sit down and hustle is a little bit difficult. But I would recommend the WeWork first, Selena second, and if you're in Baja de Tijuca, an honorable mention goes to My Intelligent Office. This place is zero bureaucracy. I found their website. They have no bureaucracy. You can just sign up, get a packet of hours, or you can get a fixed monthly. It's a little bit cheaper than WeWork, and the internet is perfect. There's free coffee. It's very quiet, very comfortable. So I highly recommend that if you're staying in Baja. As always, much more information found in the cheat sheet below. If you're traveling to Rio, you want to pay attention to your health. You want to stay healthy, especially if you are an entrepreneur and you're working hard. And in order to stay healthy, you want to find the best food at the best price. You can find lunch for about two pounds, 15 reais here. That will be called executivo or pefi. And this will be a very simple like rice, beans, some grilled chicken breast, but you don't know how happy the chicken was before it was butchered. I would be careful about those. If you find a really good spot, then stick to it. But on the whole, I would avoid the very, very cheap lunches as often the food health safety standards are not very strictly enforced to say the least. And if you have a little bit more cash to splash as a daily budget, you could find really good quality food for about eight to $12 a day. Places I'd recommend would be Bibi Sucos. They do really nice juices. You can make your own juice. They do lunches as well, which would be like good organic chicken breast, sweet potatoes. So Bibi Sucos is a great option. And Balada Mix is very, very similar. Both of these places do healthy, kind of affordable if you're a foreigner lunches and you can stick to those on a daily basis. When I lived in Leblon, I would go to Bibi Sucos every single day. I would have lunch there and after I played sport in the evening, I would go back for a juice. There's also some really cool opportunities to meet other tourists as well as locals at these places. They're very popular post beach hangout areas. You can also cook food at home, but I've tended to find that the supermarket prices are actually much higher in relation to the restaurant prices. Next, you've got your style clothes, fashion. Really important to get this on point before you come to Rio. I've tended to find that clothing is about 1.5 to two times more expensive in Rio than it is in the UK. And it's the same with the States. So you'll find a Zara here in a t-shirt that might be 10 pounds where you're from. It could be 15, 20 pounds over here in Rio. There's also a little bit less variety in the stores and often the quality is a little bit less good as well. So if you're someone that packs light and travels light, make sure that you pack some clothes that you like with you before you come because you might not find anything here. I would recommend like seven plain t-shirts, two shirts, two to four vests, a couple of pairs of trousers, linen, some board shorts, and a few pairs of underwear. That's at minimum. If you're someone that packs a little heavier, make sure that you get your clothes before you come here. Some simple stuff you'll be able to buy here, but you're going to be struggling for a lack of choice if you're someone that likes a specific style. All of the shops that I'd recommend for your clothes are list in the cheat sheet as well. Next up, your phone and electrics. The same is true. An iPhone here is twice the price that you'll find it in the UK. Make sure that you at least get your phone, your charger, some backup chargers, your cables, because it can be hard to find those things at a good price here. Everything is more expensive when it comes to electricity.
electronics and clothing. The best phone companies to go with are generally Tim, T-I-M, Claro and Vivo. But some of the European phone companies actually allow data transference to Rio. So I'm with three and I can use my same data plan here in Rio without having to change my SIM. So check whether you're able to do the same. If not, I recommend those three. All of those and the links to them are listed in the cheat sheet. It's really easy to be healthy in Rio, but it's also very easy to fall into bad habits. Just in the same way that you can get healthy juice, great protein filled lunch in the streets, you can also fall into the trap of eating a load of junk. So it's easy to be healthy if you know where to look, but it's also easy not to be. I would recommend eating fewer meals per day to avoid ending up with something that you didn't expect, something that's been deep fried and coated in sugar. Stick to the lean, healthy, protein filled meals that you can find at the restaurants I've already listed and in the cheat sheet. All along the beaches of Rio, you're gonna find these little workout stations where you can do pull-ups, dips, press-ups. I bring a pair of rings with me and do some calisthenics exercises there. It's also a great way to meet some of the locals and some of the tourists that are in Rio as well. If you're someone that trains and works out at the gym, there are two main options that you should look at. The first is body tech or body tech. The second is smart fit or smart chifichi. Yes, everything is pronounced with an extra syllable here. Body tech is going to be about 100 to 150 dollars a month, which seems expensive and it is. The quality isn't actually that good. I would say the equipment is very similar to the equipment that you'll find in SmartFit, where the price per month is about 20 bucks a month. The only difference is that with SmartFit it's quite hard to leave. Sometimes that you end up with a massive bill for five months when you thought you'd left, but they continue your subscription. Major advantage to signing up with BodyTech and taking that heftier price tag is that they have a sauna, swimming pool, steam room, and generally speaking, it's less busy. The average smart fit is completely packed and there's quite a different understanding of personal space. You might find yourself surrounded by people. There is not the same personal space rules that we have in the UK and in the gyms in particular, it can get really chaotic, especially at the sort of 9 a.m. then 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at night. The advantage of body tech is it's a little bit less busy because fewer people can afford the heftier price tag and obviously the sauna and the pools is a great addition there as well. Locations for these specific gyms in whatever area you are are going to be listed in the cheat sheet as well. If you prefer to do your exercises in more of a class structure you can find many classes all along the beach particularly Leblon, Ipanema, Copacabana. There will be foot volleyball classes or fuchi volley, volleyball, beach football, all kinds of different classes as well as some more crossfit style training training exercises on the beach. These are a really good option if you want to network and you want to work out in the sun, but in the daytime hours it can get pretty hot and if you're not used to working out in 30 degree sunshine, it can be tough. I do highly recommend playing some of the local sports. You meet a lot of people, you learn a lot about the cultural nuances and the way that Brazilians kind of act when they're outside of a structured work style environment. You learn the language really well and you get to meet people in a sort of local setting. So it's a really good way to get on the inside of the city and not feel like the sort of tourist outsider is to play volleyball or foot volleyball. You can also surf in Ipanema, Leblon or Baja de Tijuca. In Ipanema it gets really really busy and it's a little bit tough to get in because there's a lot of advanced surfers who don't like newbies coming in and taking up their turf. I would recommend going a little bit further out into Hecreo, into Baja de Tijuca to do your surfing where you'll find a bit more space and you'll find more or beginners who are probably learning in the same way that you are. Finally, make the most of the natural beauty that Rio has to offer. A lot of people I know have come away from Rio and they just didn't enjoy their experience. And a lot of people I know said it was the best thing they ever did. What I found that separates the best experiences from the worst experiences of this city is how they use the nature. The people that go on the hikes, they go to the waterfalls, they play the local sports on the beach, they really get into the beauty of the forest and the nature here. Those people tend to have an amazing experience of Rio. The people that lock themselves inside, that rely on the infrastructure of Rio and don't actually get out and enjoy the nature, tend to have a very different experience. If you stay outside, you enjoy the nature, you really get to know the natural beauty of the city, you're going to love it. If you fall into the matrix and start watching YouTube videos and using social media, 
it can be pretty depressing. Learning the language is hard. Making friends takes time. All of this stuff you have to commit to. You have to push yourself to get out the house, to explore new areas, to visit new bars, to get involved in a sport. And yes, it's not easy. It takes a lot of commitment and it takes a lot of initiative to constantly put yourself in situations of discomfort. I had to put myself in a house party full of 40 people that didn't speak English and I was the only tourist there and it was horribly uncomfortable. But I woke up the next day speaking Portuguese, not knowing how. I didn't communicate much in Portuguese. I didn't know the language, but there's something about putting yourself in the difficult position that allows you to really grow, not just in confidence, but in your language skills, your creativity, your initiative as well. So put yourself in positions of discomfort as early on as possible. So start with the hiking. The place that I recommend going first is the Deutsch Ir Mausch. This is at the top of Vigigal Favela. You'll take a motorbike taxi up and it might cost you 10 or 15 bucks to get up there. You have a hike that will last between 45 minutes and one and a half hours. Beautiful view from the top. It's a really good entree. And on the way down, you can stop at one of the local botecos in the favela and have a beer or a water, a lime juice or something like that. It's a really, really good experience. Once you have graduated from the two brothers, the Doisi and Maus, think about Pedra de Gavia. Now that hike can take about three hours. There are some parts of it that are pretty dangerous. Make sure that you go with a local or a tour guide because it has been known that people are robbed when they're hiking up or hiking back down. So make sure that you're prepared both with the footwear, the sun cream, the mosquito repellent, two litre bottle of water, but also make sure that you're not bringing anything too expensive because there's definitely risks involved with the hikes as well. Finally, make sure you visit the Cachoeira do Horto in the Tijuca Forest. This is a beautiful, pristine waterfall. There's a short hike up a secret path that takes you to one of the most magical places I've ever been in my life. This waterfall, if you go in the early hours of the morning before 7 a.m., you might have the whole thing to yourself and it is just perfect nature. So if you want to get out and you're an early bird, get out at 5 a.m., get a taxi to the start of the forest, hike up to the waterfall and enjoy it there. If you want any help from me, just get in touch. I'm happy to have a free call on the phone to help you set up. Download the cheat sheet in the description as well. I think this is my fourth or fifth tour guide video for Rio de Janeiro. This one is more specifically aimed at single digital nomads and digital entrepreneurs. You guys want to experience the wildness, the craziness, but also the beauty of Rio and do so in a way where you can actually maintain a business and keep some structure, health and good habits in your life. So if you like the video, please subscribe, comment in the comment section and give me a like. I want to keep pushing this message and helping guys who want to travel to Rio do so in a way that's not going to get them killed or robbed. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. Download the cheat sheet in the description. This is the best one I've ever seen. It took me days to put it together and it's here completely free. So download that and get in touch if you have any further questions. Thanks for watching guys. Sam out.